Welcome everyone to our first official Zemi Partner Spotlight. Today we're going to focus on Appalachian State University or known as App State and just really look at the super active community that they've built on Zemi. But before we really dive in and kind of take a look at all the really cool and exciting things that they've been doing uh, by leveraging the platform, I want to introduce the two rock stars we have with us today. So up first, we have Bailey Hostetter, the Director of Enrollment Communications. And we also have Alex Todd, the Enrollment Communications Specialist. And uh, super excited to have both of them with us. I've known both of them for a while. They are great and wonderful partners. And they're two people that really get this stuff. Like they really, really understand it. And oftentimes a lot of people will come and ask like, hey, who, we want to know the power users on ZB. We want to know the schools that really get this, that really understand the student engagement thing and this community stuff. And uh, these are two individuals that are up there at the top of that list. And so they're going to spend some time today and kind of share information and some of the unique things that they're doing to build that type of engagement with students. So before we start hearing all of those exciting things, uh, Bailey and Alex, I would like for each of you, and we can start with you, Bailey, just Ready? briefly introduce yourself, let us all get to know a little bit about your background, the role that you have there, and also as you introduce yourself, um, if anybody's watching today and they're like, I don't know a lot about App State, throw in a few little of those uh, facts just so we know a little bit more about App State. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having us today. We are excited to be here and to talk about ZV. Um, Zimi is one of our most favorite platforms that we're using right now. So excited to, to chat today. But um, again, my name is Bailey Hofstetter. Um, I am currently serving as the Director of Enrollment Communications at App State. I have been, um, prior to this, you know, I, I worked heavily in recruitment and really had my boots on the ground and really saw uh, the power of, of building community with, with our students in the recruitment cycle. And I actually uh, had the pleasure of using Zimi back in the day when Zimi was founded, uh, we were, um, gosh, probably in one of the first years that you all started, we were using Zimi um, at my previous institution as a part of the application process. So it's been really fun to, uh, you know, about, gosh, almost five years later to get, uh, to bring Zimi back in uh, to the institution where I'm at now. And I don't have to say much about App State. You can see my Zoom background. We, uh, we, we love our campus and our location. Um, we located in the Blue Ridge Mountains, of course, and are really excited about the future of App State. We are heading to the Valley this fall. Uh, we are opening a new campus in Hickory, North Carolina, and thrilled about that. So uh, a lot of great things happening at App State. I'll pass it over to Alex. Awesome. Thank you, Bailey. Uh, hello, everyone. So my name is Alex Todd, and I am our Enrollment Communication Specialist. I work with Bailey um, on all of our CRM communications, and I help a lot with our social media alongside of our student intern. And I do a lot of graphic design, print, photography, videography, a whole bunch of stuff, just staying creative and involved. And I'm also one of the main people that help run our Zemi community and work with our student intern closely on that. Before coming to App, which I've been here almost three years now, I worked at a startup called Tallo, and it was this platform where high school and college students kind of filled out a profile showcasing, you know, their classwork and all their extracurriculars to get connected with like colleges, scholarships, and other opportunities. And that really kind of sparked my interest in staying in higher ed and really helping students get connected to those next educational goals, which drove me to be here at App State. And also it's hard to pass up being in Boone. And I wanna say it's probably the most beautiful part in the Appalachian Mountains. And fun fact is that the Blue Ridge Parkway is actually one of the most visited national park places. Um, there's millions of people that come through here. And if you ever get a chance to visit Boone in the fall, it's definitely worth the trip. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, seeing both of your backgrounds really is just excruciating to me right now. Uh, <laughs> when I'm here in Southern Indiana with nothing but soybeans and corn around me. I'm super jealous. Um, I always love those amazing college environments that are set in just beautiful locations. And you all definitely have that. Let's do this. I want to jump into kind of like a, we got a few topics and things we'll, we'll, we'll discuss, but first one is just this buzzword of community. All right. If throw out AI for a second, because that's probably the number one buzzword in higher ed right now, you, you, know, you just can't go anywhere without hearing all things about AI. 
But community also has been this buzzword the past few years or so that you're seeing a lot of. And so I just wanted to start and like, Alex, we could actually start with you and then get Bailey as well. But like, when you hear that word community, what does that mean to you? Like in the context of, of what you all do or higher ed, like how would you define it just in your own words? What does community mean to you? Yeah, well, um, a good thing about the word community for App State is it's less of a buzzword and more of a pillar in how we always talk about our institution. Um, one of the great things when we're talking about, you know, coming to App State is if you come to Boone, there's going to be someone that's going to say hello. There's going to be a smiling face. It's welcoming. And really, that's kind of how I see community is just you're able to exist in a space where you feel like you're welcome and you also belong. And that just makes it so easy to connect with others. Um, and that's one of the great things about, you know, just in higher ed and coming to an institution, you want to find a place that you belong at. And that's really our whole goal is to get students connected and get them finding that community where they feel like they belong. There's people that they're going to be able to spend time with, able to just make lifelong friends and grow with. And um, for me personally, that's kind of what community is all about is just connecting with others that want to connect with you too. Love that. It's great. Bailey? Yeah. Um, I mean, I echo Alex's thoughts. I think community really is being able to find find your people in, in places that you may not have thought you would find people. And I think that's been a fun part of, you know, our jobs is kind of helping helping frame that for for students and and even our our faculty and staff and our, our whole campus community here. But yeah, really connecting with those when uh, you know, people that you may not have thought you, you may be connecting with, but you're you're able to really challenge your your views and 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 um, open up that that scope of um, you know who, who you're around and and help you grow. Like Alex said, that's a that's what comes to mind for me. I love it. I love it. For and for for everyone that's watching. So one of the things about community and with Zemi is it's 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 been this idea. So think about everything that Alex and Bailey just shared, and then think of it now. In well, when does community start? Does community start for our students once they've arrived on campus or can community, can all those things that Alex and Bailey were just sharing, could that start months and months before they ever even think to arrive on campus? And so I think that's where, as we shift and we talked a little bit about Zemi, I think my next question here, like Bailey, I'll like go with you is I wanted to know like, what was life thinking of how you all have leveraged community uh, on Zemi to start to kind of extend that into prospective students. What was life like trying to do some of that before Zemi versus how has maybe Zemi changed the way you can create that sense of community for prospective students before they even get on campus? Yeah. You know, I think, you know, when when we think about Zemi, we're really thinking about, or, or the students that are in Zemi, we're looking at not just admitted students, but the full funnel. So a student that may we may not even have in our system yet, in our CRM system, they may be a freshman or sophomore in high school. And prior to having the app, we didn't have a way to connect with those younger students who were seeking that community, seeking to learn more about the Mountaineer community. We didn't have a space for them. And so we, um, you know, other than our traditional methods of outreach, uh, we couldn't really um, help cultivate community early on in the funnel. And so um, we, we were really focusing more on the admitted stage. And, um, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll let Alex speak on this, too. Um, you know, we, of course, were doing the traditional Facebook groups and, and other uh, ideas like that. But we, we still were missing the mark and we weren't really seeing the community being built in, in these groups that we were creating. And, yeah, Alex, I think when we first created, we had at one point what it was around at the time, close to 16,000 admits and what, maybe 1,100 in the Facebook group. Yeah, just and, join it. And when I first started, that was one of my early tasks. I started in October. So, you know, we're right in the cycle. I got thrown right into things. And then come December, we release our early action decisions. And, you know, you release 10,000 plus decisions and you're looking at this Facebook group that has maybe 800 kids in it. And then, you know, you're sitting there, you're approving the request because you want to make sure that they're actually admits. And then you're like, 
Facebook shows you when they created their profile and you're like, this poor 18 year old created a Facebook profile just to join this group. And it really just showed they want to connect and they want to find a space to connect. And I mean, you'd even see pages and groups being made on your behalf that you had no idea that were out there that are somehow official. And then there's like 37 Instagram pages that are class of 2027 at App State. And you know that these students want to connect. And especially like that was in 2021. They just spent a whole year being remote. They're just craving that interaction and just they want any way that they can talk to each other, they want to. And we knew that they probably want to do this before their admits. You know, they want to do this the whole time and find others that really want to engage with them. And they all want to, you know, have the same end goal. So getting them connected earlier was, you know, a desire of ours. And it's just like, okay, well, how do we do better? How do we take it a step further? And initially we just wanted something better than a Facebook group. And we somehow landed in something that kind of went full funnel and does a whole bunch more than we ever could have expected. Yeah, I love it. And then the people that know me, they they know I've, you know, been preaching how Facebook is just not that place for this demographic for for several years now. And um, and there's still a lot of colleges and universities out there that are doing that because you just you don't know what you don't know and you want to do something. But you really nailed it, Alex, that like, look, these students are going to do this and find ways to do this, whether you choose to be a part of it in a place with them where they are or not. Like those Insta pages, I mean, you name it, they're going to try to find ways to do this. And I think one of the big things that I've been trying to help higher ed understand is for a long time, we thought it was just all about waiting until we had our admitted class. And that if you're waiting until you have your admitted class to try to start to be a part of community with these students, you've missed it. You've missed it because they're wanting to connect and be a part of that starting at the very beginning at the top of the funnel. So yeah, you really drove home some key things that I'm always preaching, but I don't know if anybody listens to me. Sometimes it's like, well, yeah, of course you're going to say that soon. So like hearing you guys say that, I think is, is pretty powerful. How has Zemi like helped in that communication aspect? So the, I mean, the beautiful thing about Zemi is it is where prospective students go. You, all, you had tons of prospective students following App State on Zemi before you all made the decision that we actually want to step into this and be a part of this community with them since they're all already here. Since joining and really being a part of that community with all of those students, in what ways has that changed, if any, the way that you're able to just communicate with prospective students? Yeah, I think, you know, and you, you mentioned this, we're really, we're meeting students where they're at. And I think we were focusing so hard on, we're, we're working too hard almost, thinking about what, where are these other, where are they at? Where are these other areas that we can connect with them? And um, we're, we're missing that they're already, they're already in this platform and we, we need to meet them where they're at. We need to communicate the way they like to be communicated with. And, and, uh, and, you know, Zimi, it's, it's very similar to, to like sending an Instagram direct message, that kind of casual conversation um, and that type of communication was different for us, but really boded us well because students really reacted well. Um, they saw that uh, it's not, um, it, you know, some students are intimidated to ask questions and talk to an official admissions counselor, right? Or someone, um, but this was a, an easy way to kind of open up that door and take down that barrier. And so we are seeing a lot more really great casual conversations with students and a lot of that kind of high touch communication with students because they feel more comfortable um, in, the, in the app to, to maybe ask certain questions they may not have emailed us or picked up the phone and called us. So, um, you know, again, really just meeting meeting them where where they're at. And it's really then Zemi has really just become it's our everyday. Now, it's just another method um, when we think about our campaigns and our tactics and how we're going to communicate um Zimi's always top on the list because we know hey they're already there we're we have an active audience there um even something that seems so serious um like you've got to submit your final transcripts or you have to do this important step um Zimi has allowed us to communicate that in a way that's maybe less intimidating gives them a chance to ask questions quicker um yeah i love that I think we, we live in the age like right now where it's like we we all have their leads, right? Like we we have every school has their contact information, their leads, and we've got the most sophisticated CRMs and we get set up. But do we have their attention? And, and I think that's where, you know, if they're right there with you all day, every day, you just have that immediate attention. 
um, as a new channel to be able to communicate with them. Alex, I want you to jump in on this one, but I want to shift it just a little bit because uh, we actually were were already kind of discussing this earlier a little bit. But have you noticed any change in like now when an incoming class arrives on campus, all of these students that have already had all of these connections with each other, have you noticed any change in like what that's like once they get to campus, maybe because they've had this so much time ahead of time to build those relationships? Just Alex, share maybe some examples of some things you've seen there. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, and part of my responsibility is going out and getting photos. Um, last year we had move in, um, much like right now we're we're having move in week right now. And um, last year I was able to go out and take pictures of students. You know, whether they're outside or in their dorms, and you know, we look for students decked out in the App State gear. Uh, all the incoming students, you know, they got a T-shirt for confirming and. You know, I kind of pick on them a little bit just because I know they're active and engaged and walking around and be like, oh, can I take your picture? And then subtly I'd ask, hey, have you heard of Zemi? Did you follow us on social? And I got a couple that are like, well, yeah, I was on Zemi. This is how I met my roommate right here. And just seeing that, you're like, oh, well, that's amazing. That's exactly why we joined Zemi. Um, and, you know, to go beyond even the students that are on campus and actually enrolled, we did some events, um, and I still like to go around and ask, hey, were you on Zemi? And, you know, we're trying to we had printed out a QR code. We're like, scan this, join Zemi. And the whole group of students was like, we're already on there. Like, I'm already in the chat channels. I don't need to scan it. And it's just, it was nice and cool to see, you know, actually see the students that are on there. Because a lot of times, you know, you see all their chats and stuff, um, and sometimes you learn, learn more about them than you really want to know but you don't always put it face to face. So it was just cool seeing not only the admitted confirmed students, but these prospective students coming on campus for events. They're like, oh, I'm already in there. Like I've been chatting, I've already found my friends. Um, it's it's super encouraging and it's just fun to see and talk about it because you don't always get that student interaction with them. Oh, I love it. I love it. And you're right, like I, I've even seen now, you know, so you think about the evolution of just how students and when they can make the connections with their future classmates, right? Like when I, when I went off to Indiana University in the fall of 1994, you, you didn't, there was a basic little one hour convocation the day before classes started. You, you were lucky if you made a friend by the, by the end of the first semester because it all, but through the decades here, it's moved earlier and earlier. You know, we got to a point where we're now we're doing these new student orientation sessions or so that could have been the first time that a group could meet. Like now you're seeing students literally like before they even come to a campus visit, they're sitting like you're seeing them on ZV like, hey, I'm, I'm going to get to campus for a kid. Like who wants to go on the same day and do our campus visit on the same day so we can hang out together? That's one of the first ways we could actually be together in person. So it is. It's just very powerful. We know students are craving that connection. Like students are worried about on the first day of classes, will I have somebody to eat lunch with? Or would somebody even be able to walk with me to a class that I'm in? You know, that that's scary for students. And so I think now they're able to come in with all those relationships and connections, uh, just lowers that stress and anxiety, which is super cool. Okay, I want to shift gears a little bit. And I want to talk about a change that we're actually starting to see happen on Zemi here within the past year or so. For those familiar with Zemi, in the early days, obviously this was very much a powerful tool and platform for our admissions folks. Um, I mean, obviously this really helps. It moves the needle on app rates and yield and melt, obviously to bring a class in. What we've started seeing more and more recently is a little bit of shift and we're starting to see other folks around college campuses, other departments like, well, wait a minute. If if all of these students are here, well, tell us a little bit more. What exactly is this? Should we be uh, have a seat at the table there? I'm curious to know with you all at App State, have you started to see anything where other departments are maybe wanting to get involved or play a role or seeing ways that they might want to leverage uh, the platform? So let's maybe start with you, Alex. Like, What are you seeing that anybody else on campus like, hey, how do we get involved in this? How could we potentially leverage this thing? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, one of the first that comes to mind is our Res Life staff. Um, and that was honestly earlier on. Um, 
this time last year or really in the spring of um, 2022, our housing application had already opened. Um, we'd been sending out comms about our RLCs, our living communities, and trying to you know get students into not only housing that they want, but actually in those communities, back to that word, that they enjoy being a part of. And you know, housing staff was like, oh, we heard something about this app that you're on that lets students find roommates or something. And we're like, oh yeah, that's Zimi. You know, we sat down, have a conversation with them and they're like, oh, well, you know, see what are we doing on our actual star res application? What's on Zimi? How do those match? And it ended up, um, you know, we put some links to Zimi within the housing portal as they're going through their application to say, not only, you know, fill this out, we'll help match you with students, but jump in Zimi. That's where they're at. And you can chat them. You can message. There's so many more questions you can answer and you can find so much more. So that was really one of the early on partners that's gotten involved with us. And um, it's continued to grow from there, honestly. And um, I don't know if you have some other uh, partners that you've talked with, Bailey. Yeah, I think, you know, housing has been a big one for sure. And the other one that comes to mind is orientation, our orientation groups and um, you know, those folks that are really involved in that transition piece, um, you know, taking them from admissions on to, to being a current student. And, you know, they they saw the volume that we had in, in our communities. And, and um, you know, Alex and I talked very, you know, we were always very excited about Zimi and talking to them about this. And and uh, they reached out and said, hey, well, let us promote it during orientation sessions, those summer sessions. And, and that really was cool because they actually, um, Alex created an awesome print piece that talked about Zimi. Um, and they were able to include that in, in everyone's packets. Um, of course, a lot of those students were already on um, it, on our channel, but that just reinforced uh, they were, so they weren't just seeing it from admission. They were seeing it from other folks across campus, the importance of the app and and to get in there and to find your community there in ZV. So that has been uh, really awesome. And we hope to do more, more with that group in that transition area. We've also seen a lot of different um, academic programs and um, small uh, clubs and orgs on campus that they really want to grow their community and their interest. And so we've been able to work with them to create, you know, specific um, channels just for, for their groups, um, like the Honors College, for example, you know, students who, um, you know, a smaller community within our community, right? And um, and so we've had folks across campus really, they, they were seeking the same thing. How do I get my small community together. Um, you know, group me wasn't really working. Emails wasn't really working. We need a space. And they came to us and we were able to, to make it happen with some targeted channels. I love it. Love it. Those are all great examples. And then Bailey, just so for you all there at App State, and so everyone knows, like who, who there at App State owns the Zimi community? So for you all, like who, who are the direct people that like, you know, we're the ones that kind of really own it. Is, is it admissions? Is it marketing? How does it work for you all there at App State? Yeah, so it is primarily admissions, enrollment management at App State, um, but we do work very closely with uh, marketing with our university communications office. Um, they were a partner with us in, um, in really getting this app off the ground, but we the the day-to-day -day management um, and the maintenance does, does stay in enrollment management and admissions. I love that. I think there's a lot of potential for Zimi and and you've been partners with us for for a little while now. So you said, but I think Zimi is continuing to evolve. We're seeing more and more current college students want to keep using the app. So I think we're we're starting to see more offices that might be in student life. Like, wait a minute, um, maybe there's some things here. We've got uh, one of our partners, Career Services, is like, wait, we think we can do so. It's going to be interesting in these coming year coming years to see how this could grow and how more people could have a seat at the table to want to be a part of the community. Uh, love those examples. You mentioned I, I did have one of the questions on here, and you kind of already mentioned it a little bit, but maybe just tell me. So one of the things I think you mentioned that we did for you all when Res Life kind of wanted to get involved was we set up all of these specific channels. And I'm thinking we maybe we did those for the residence halls, but I'm just curious, like Bailey, tell me specifically what was it that you all did around housing with channels, with chat areas for students? How did that work for you all there at App State? Yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, in the beginning, um, you know, outside of the the roommate finder thing, we were noticing in our general chats and ask counselor chats that people had a lot of questions about housing. And 
So the first step we took actually was to create a specific, you know, ask a housing channel. And that was where, you know, we worked really closely with, with our Res Life staff to get professionals over there to be in the app and answering questions for these students specifically about housing. So that was the start. Um, which was awesome. And and they were busy in that channel. There was a lot of questions and a lot of good conversations. So that's awesome. And then we've evolved and we've been really excited um, this year. And, and Alex, you have to speak on this too. We were able to develop a community or a channel for each residence hall this year. So we just launched that just a little while ago. And man, it is amazing. These students are so excited to get in these channels and chat. And it's really been um I mean, it's it's been very successful so far to see them meeting other people that they're going to be living with this fall. Yeah, it's it's been great. You know, I've worked with y'all a lot to try to think of new channels to make different things. Um, I've had some that have worked well, some that have not worked so well. As soon as we went live with those housing chats, I opened up the app and every single one, new notification, new notification. And all the chats were just going crazy. Even the general chat, everyone was just like, Oh, you know, I got, here's my housing. Here's my housing. Even the, they'd already been assigned like a month or two ago, but it just reignited that fire and they're all so ready to connect. And I think just with anticipation of move-in week coming up, they're just so eager to just start talking to each other. And I, sometimes there's a tons of notifications and it can be overwhelming, but to see all the new ones on those chats was really exciting just to see how many students were, you know, already joining, you know, oh, our, we already got all the hall in there. We've already got like 80% in there and it's fun to see them jump in. And that was, you know, since we had established that partnership working with housing early on, they were already kind of, they, we had that buy-in that they knew Zimi's impactful. Zimi is something that we need to pursue and that's how we're going to get these commu- these students involved in finding their communities that you know, working to get, oh, can you send us the list of students in each hall? Can you break it down for us? Can you give us all this data? And they're like, yes, we can, because we know why it's important. And they saw that end goal. So I think working with those campus partners early on, just to get them involved, even if we're not actively making a chat channel yet, just they know about it. I think that's so impactful in the long run. I love that. Uh, it it goes into something we've been, you know, really pushing at Zemi that is it's connected students thrive right? Just connected students thrive. And in all of the creative ways you can help them make these connections, it's extremely powerful. Listen, students have had this need and desire to do around this housing thing for a long time. I'll give you a perfect example. But the technology has changed. Way, way back in 2009, when I was on your side of the desk, and I was like, Alex, like trying to come up with these crazy, fun, creative ways. Back when the Facebook actually was super exclusively cool for young people, this demographic, (laughs) I actually saw incoming students starting to do something that like blew my mind. One of these students would find the layout, like the floor, kind of almost like the blueprint layout of their res hall. They would upload that picture. And as you know, on, you know, on Facebook, you can tag, you know, you could tag the image, all of the incoming students would tag themselves on that one image where their room was. And it was just showing they were trying to find a way to leverage some technology to even before they got on campus to see like, oh my gosh, I already see who's two doors down, who's right next to me. So it's cool that now the technology has changed, but it's still meeting the desire of those students to to find those connections, which is really cool. Let's shift gears again. Let's talk about user adoption. That's a big thing with Zemi, uh, with any social platform, right? Like with any of them, oh, we got to try to get more followers on Instagram. How do we get more followers on our TikTok channel? So obviously we want as many of these prospective students joining the community as possible. So I want to spend a little bit of time and talk about that. You all have seen amazing adoption in your community of all of our partners. You, you all really excel there. I kind of wrote some things down here. Um, over 2,600 of your incoming students uh, on Zemi actively there in the community. Um, you had over 100% growth uh, year over year now with nearly 16,000 student followers just in the 2023 cohort, which is crazy. What is your team doing to, to really get to boost? And there's things that we do at Zemi as well. It's like that we help all of our college partners with adoption. But I'm more focused on what are the unique things that you all may be doing to really help 
get all of those prospective students in your community as early as possible. Alex, you can you kick us off. Yeah. Um, and as you mentioned, Zimi does stuff on your side. So, you know, w going into it, we knew, okay, Zimi's pushing this. They're sending out some text messages to these students. They're going to be aware of Zimi. They're getting that push. And really for us, it was, you know, how do we integrate it not only into, you know, our marketing plans, into our email comms, how do we integrate it into our vocabulary? How do we make Zimi not this extra tool that we have to remember to talk about or do specific pushes for, but how is it just involved in every facet of, you know, recruitment and engagement? How do we keep it in there? And that's, you know, showing the counselors why it's so awesome, showing them, hey, this is the picture of these roommates that met each other on Zimi, you know, talking with all these campus partners, just letting them know, like, just start talking about Zimi. And for, for me personally, it's been you know, I meet with people, I explain what Zimi is, I walk them through it. I say, this is why we're on here. Like, this is our goal. And it's really, it all goes back to, we're finding that place where students can connect. And, you know, there's a lot of specific ways to integrate it, but it's really just making sure everyone knows what Zimi is and really having that at the forefront of their mind when we're talking to students, letting them know, this is the path you want to take. This is where you want to be. And I think that's, that was our first step is really, how do we just get it everywhere you know and to your point i always tell all of our partners that's not a, a switch you can just flip overnight right that takes like that takes time to build zimi the vernacular into all of our you know previous forms of comms and outreach and those things so bailey jump in on that maybe even share an example or two of maybe some specific things you all have done that you feel like this helps make sure we're driving prospective students into that community. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, early on, one of the first things, and it was a simple thing, but even, you know, putting the icon, the Zimi icon places was the first thing we needed to do. And it was integrating it into all of our email signatures. So every admissions counselor has that in there. Any Anyone that's, you know, maybe talking with prospective students, that's in, always in their email signature. We want students to start to get familiar with the logo um, and, and that brand so they would be familiar with it. So that was one of the first things. Um, of course, email communication was a big thing for us. And, and Alex was a huge rock star in this, creating some awesome content that's fun and relevant and it's short and punchy and, and really got students excited about, oh, I, I want to get on this app. They're, you know, this is pretty cool. Um, you know, Alex was able to make some really awesome gifts and images and ways to show how to navigate the community. That was one thing we really wanted to to drive home is um, you jump in the app, there's so many different channels and things you can you can join. So we really try to help build that roadmap. Okay, if you're interested in this, these are some channels you should start with. You know, we try to give them a starting point and then that let them open up the gates from there. Print has also been um, a big, big part for us. I mentioned Alex making an awesome postcard and we did make specific print materials for Zimi that can be used on the road, on, in our lobby, handed out on campus. Um, but it's also now integrated in all of our prospective student pieces. Um, when you see the icons for Facebook, Instagram, you're going to see Zimi now on every single print piece. And that is amazing. And that's been a, a big collaboration with our marketing team as well to make sure that the, the work they're doing is also integrating um, the Zimi language and stuff as well. And then I'll, I'll, I'll lastly mention web, web. I think on the website, we really, we wanted to make sure again, the the logo and that brand of Zimi was out there. And so that was one of the first things we did was add that to our admission site, talking about what Zimi is, why to join, and and to develop that on their website and their even in their student portals. Um, so when they go to look at for what they're missing on their application, there's going to be a note about joining Zimi in there and to learn more. So, you know, as Alex said, it's really just in every tactic that we're doing, we thought, okay, where can Zimi fit in? Even if it's small, even if it's subtle, um, they're going to start seeing it in every single communication and, and uh, touch point with us. I love that. And if you're one of our current partners that's that's on today and watching, that that's kind of the mindset you have to have. I always go back and put, put my Dean of Admissions hat on. And my mindset is, where are all the places that we ever potentially have an interaction with prospective students? And I do this audit of all of where those potential interactions could happen. And then I ask myself, 
at that particular interaction, did that student have an opportunity to immediately be able to easily jump into this community and start connecting with all of these other students? And if not, then I know that's where we got a gap there. Uh, and clearly, like you all at App State, like set the bar really high. But if you're one of our current partners and you're watching, you feel like, oh my gosh, like we're, we got a lot of work to do. Again, this doesn't happen overnight, but you want to be strategic about slowly starting to build those things in place to help with that uh, user adoption. Now, before we get close to wrapping up here, I always talk about kind of two big pillars. One of those is adoption. Obviously, we want all of these prospective students in that community engaging with each other, building those connections and relationships. But the one of the other pillars, though, then is engagement. Just once they're in that community. So I want to spend the last couple minutes here in just hearing from you all some of the fun ways that you or your team is able to engage all of these students once they're in that community. So... Um, Bailey, we'll just stay with you and let you kind of continue on your but Like, what are some things you all do that just, it makes it fun to engage all of these students, uh, that are in your community? Yeah. Well, you know, it's, we, we do have, um, we do work with a student intern who really, um, it's been awesome to have that student perspective to help us in the community and, and utilizing that kind of student to student peer to peer type of, of, um, messaging and, and posts in ZME. I think. For the students in ZME to see our current students, you know, that has been really what's what's helped the engagement and something that we, you know, we, we tried it to do. But to be honest, we haven't, you know, our, our student influencer doesn't post a lot. I think they um, are just very, they've been very thoughtful about when, when they post and timing it in a certain way when, okay, this is what everyone's chat, we hear they're talking about this in the general chat. Let's put something out on the announcement channel or on, um, you know, on our feed that's going to be relevant. You know, they students may not realize that we're we're watching the general chats as well, but they're they're now seeing the connection and that's getting the engagement even more. Oh, see what App State with the student posted. We were just chatting about that and that was really picking up the engagement there. Yeah, Alex, what what else do you? What else are we doing? Yeah. I'm trying, yeah. Um, I mean, I think some great channels for us have been the, you know, ask our first year counselor, ask our transfer counselors, ask the housing staff. Those are great ways that I think we're really utilizing the potential of Zemi as that casual two-way conversation with our counselors and with our staff. But like Bailey said, it's been a lot of hands off at some point. Um, it's been like we all mentioned, they're craving a space to be in and we're just telling them this is the space to be. And with so many students in there, they know it. They know this is where they want to be, and they're able to start talking and having those communications. And I know I think sometimes that's kind of you know a worry, or some people see it as a barrier. If we join Zemi, do we have the staff to cover us? Are we going to? I don't need. I already have my social media plan. Do I need to add Zemi as another thing? How much extra effort is this going to be? And I think you know, like me and Bailey both said, it's. You don't have to be so afraid of how much you have to post in Zemi. Just put Zemi in the places that you're already doing stuff. And just right. integrate it right into what you're already doing. It's so much easier to add it to an email footer, you know, add it to your, the app is open email, or we're so glad you applied. Here's why you joined Zemi, not just follow us on social. It goes from follow us on social to, yeah, get connected on Instagram, but jump in Zemi. That's the place to be. And really focusing on that, I think, is what's, you know, benefited us so much with our growth and just having an active community is making sure that the students are in there because it can only be so active and so engaged if students aren't in there. So okay. once we get them in there, they just, they want to talk. We, You can jump in our general chat any day and you just see them talking about all sorts of things. I'm like, I don't need my student to post about her dog or what she ate for dinner because they're already talking about it. Yeah, I think... Alex, really, it's Zemi is such a uniquely different social platform than all of the other traditional social platforms we've leveraged in higher ed, right? Most of those other platforms, really, the focus is more about us and our brand. It's the content calendar. It's the, and, and that's wonderful. Like Instagram should be that. And the stuff we're doing on TikTok and those things, it should be that. But really, but that takes work. That takes work and bandwidth and staffing and planning. Where Zemi, like, that's not the content, really isn't the focus. 
Zemi, it's just about the place where these students want to be chatting with each other all day, every day. And then any amount of time, some of your admission counselors pop in and like engage with them. Like, it's not that they have to do that to drive engagement. If you're not posting stuff to your YouTube channel, well, then there's no there's no reason to follow and be subscribed to your YouTube channel. Like Zemi doesn't work like that. Those students were there before you all got involved in the community. They would be chatting and engaging, you know, even without you guys like doing it. So I think that bandwidth question or concern is a really good one. Let's do this one last thing. I didn't really have this on the plan for today, but I got to ask real quick, data. Data is one of the most significant aspects of Zemi. All of the data that you have access to about uh, who these students are, what they're thinking, all this. Are there are there any things you would just briefly share that would say how the data on the back end from this community has been beneficial or important to to the operations there within uh, the enrollment division? And Bailey, you can hop in and start us off. Sure. Yeah. And the data, the data is awesome. I think that's been one of the the biggest takeaways from us is to we we see the active channels, we see them chatting, but then to really see, okay, these are the amount of students who. Um, X amount of our admitted students are are in this this channel, or we have so many students saying that they indicated that they're going in Zemi, um, and you know that's a data point that we can now monitor and see. Okay, they said they're they said they're coming to App State in Zemi. Now let's check in our CRM. Have they already indicated that they're coming? And, and it really has helped us become more targeted, and and we can use um, Zemi as a little bit of an enrollment um, indicator and a predictor for us, and so. The data, you know, and that's that's what I would say is some of the um, could be some of the larger lift is really taking time. OK, how do we want to use this data? How do we want to integrate it into our system? And and that's been a lot of what we've been working on this last year is there is a lot of great data points when they joined, when they unfollowed Zemi. Um, they may have come in with a different major on Zemi than we have in our system. So it's really gotten our wheels turning and how can we become more targeted and segmented in our communications, if we have students in, interested in, um, I don't know, in psychology, a, a big group in Zemi, and we can pull them into to our CRM, and maybe we didn't have that information before, well, now we have an audience to really target and to send them information about our psychology program, for example. So it's really, I think, a, a great enrollment um, predictor and an indicator for us to, to also just to, in general predict just engagement and how um, the level of interest they have in half state. And then we can use that data to become more savvy in our targeting. Love that. Alex, any other additional thoughts? Um, I was just thinking, you know, one of the great things, um, we are a slate school. It We can get the feed right in. That's awesome. And then if, you know, you want to just grab something real quick, you can go to the dashboard. You can find your data feeds. Well, I'll download an Excel and filter what I'm looking for. Um, right before May 1, you know, you're, putting all those it's time to confirm pushes we're doing that and it's like okay well let me just grab the spreadsheet and filter okay who's said that they're going and then let me see okay well they're not actually confirmed yet so i'll throw those ids in there and we'll send hey we see that you indicated you go into app state but you haven't paid that deposit yet like it's time like let's do it today and just being able to grab the data that easy and use it how you want it i think is just so valuable I think about six years back before I joined Zemi, when I was back in that Dean of Admissions role, and I would do those, my counseling staff, they hated. I'm like, guys, we got to do a call night. And, you know, we come in, but we had such limited information on, and even with the CRM, still limited kind of like about, so it's kind of like we were just casting a wide net, like here, we got to just call every one of these students to try to like, but I feel like with Zemi, and the amount of in information you can know about who these students are, right? So like things about them, you know, and those areas that, you know, highly engaged, moderately engaged, like, I feel like you're able to, like, I would be able to take a team like, look, we've got limited time, limited resources, but if we call, if we get a message out to these 30 students, th that can move the needle for those students. Um, and so I think the data is really powerful. It was one of the things when I was back on that side, that's what I missed from Instagram. That's what I couldn't get from Snapchat. That's what I was never able to get from Facebook or like, 
those companies are never going to give us that type of data that we really need. So that's one of the things I love about Zimi. I will stop blabbing on and on and we will wrap this up. Um, one, I just want to thank both of you so much. You, you both are amazing. I've known you for a while. Uh, the work that you do is absolutely incredible. You're amazing representatives of, of App State with the work that you do. Thank you so much for taking the time just to share all this information. This will be beneficial to people that aren't on ZB. It'll be beneficial to current partners that we're looking to kind of dive in deeper. If anyone wanted to follow up with you all or contact you or reach out, do you mind sharing? Uh, we'll start Alex with like the best way maybe that someone could contact you if they had more questions. Yeah, I think um, you know, I'm happy to connect with anyone on LinkedIn. Um, you can send me an email at my App State email if you want to connect. Yeah, and same with me. I'm happy to connect on on LinkedIn or reach out um, via email um, or phone or you know if you want to jump on a Zoom call like this and chat about you know our experience and uh, ask this question about Zimi, we're happy to meet any way we can. Awesome, thank you both. And again, thanks everyone for for joining with us today. Also, if you're just curious, you can always just download Zimi and follow App State. Now you may not get access to all of the different chat channels. But if you want to see just how amazing they are, feel free just to install the app, follow App State, and check them out. Alex, Bailey, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for, for watching today. And we'll be back in the future for another uh, Zemi Partner Spotlight. And we'll see you all then. Thanks for joining. Bye. Thank you.